What is up, lads, and welcome to another episode of the Pez Universe podcast. Wes, you're back, man. Look, I, I missed you last week, all right? I was getting a bit emotional, but he's back this week, ladies and gentlemen, and we're also joined by two absolute legends in the Pez community. They're in, one of them's in incognito, um, waiting for a special landmark uh, to be reached on his YouTube channel. It is none other than Spoonie Pizzas. What's up, man? Yay, how you doing, lads? All right? We're good, we're good. Very and good, our, second, our second guest tonight is... A beast of a streamer. He is point, point, Wes is pointing to him up there. Um, that's where he's going to appear. A beast of a streamer. One of the best Pez players I've seen in the last couple of years. Uh, with no disrespect to anybody else, of course. But it is none other than Mednasa. What's up, man? Thank you very much. This is too much. <laughs> Thanks for the compliments. <laughs> what do you mean? Um, you told me that I had to hype you up if you were going coming on, no? Thanks that I can on, be man. here. <laughs> yeah, man. Delighted to have you both on. And again, appreciate you taking time over Friday night because I know uh made your stream and as of now. So you're going to get to, you're going to actually get the first live Pez Universe podcast. Like, so, I mean. We're going to need yeah. tips and tricks after this. From, from yeah. Uh, that's what we're going to need. We're going <laughs> to yeah. need like a, right, here's how you do it. Here's where you put everything. And here's how you set up a chat. That's what we need. <laughs> He's becoming the professional now, uh, just overnight. But uh yeah, I mean. Uh, there's there's loads to talk about, lads. Obviously, we haven't chatted to you, so I do appreciate you coming on to the podcast. And it's great to get a mix of of guys coming on as well. Spoonie, obviously, you're predominantly an offline, you know, tutorial uh, type of player for Pez. Yep. Um, yep. And then, Med, obviously, you're, you know, a my club guy that streams a lot and plays online, ranking cups and all that sort of, sort yep. of stuff. So it's a great mix. And then, Wes, obviously, you're, you know, a FIFA expert. It's um, annoyed. That's what I am. I'm just annoyed. <laughs> If I'm a mood, I'm annoyed. Like, uh, yeah, you know, last in a constant week, state of frustration now. The last like, few like, weeks, you know? Yeah, like last week, like I was watching and I was like, it, it, you know what? I take one podcast off to do work, and it's like all of a sudden everyone starts swearing at each other. Or <laughs> using it. And I'm just like, how is how is it, how is the swear word a noun, adjective, and a verb? Like, how are you how are you guys doing this? Like, so now Irish, that's what we do. Of we course, I, swear I, words, you know? I, I, I'm back in the saddle. I'm here to establish order, but of course yeah, we've got we need to keep it a bit more. PG because yeah. I got a bit of a scolding during the week from some guy that watches with his young son and was like, yeah. "Can you tone down the swearing?" Yeah, so also, apologies. also proof, also proof that we always take our feedback on board as well. Yeah, yeah we trawl through course. the comments, we trawl through the tweets, we trawl through everything to to basically just make this as, as you know the best possible podcast it can be. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we we take all points and and uh, obviously if we do have younger viewers, of course, you don't want to be. Uh, yeah, turn turn in the air blue, Buzz. So yeah, try and try and stay away from your. Uh, I'm gonna have to count down. I'm very bad. Very try and stay away from your Richard Hearty tendencies. Yeah. <laughs> Don't speak about Hearty like that. <laughs> He's a gentleman. Anyway, right. We're gonna start. Right. We got. I've got actually a couple of notes here, Wes. Tonight, look, getting. Oh my god! You know. Oh god! Oh He's no! Getting yeah. Yeah, <laughs> He's getting prepared. You know? Jesus! I mean, we've got the we've got we've got Midnight and Spoonie on tonight. I want to impress him, you know. Go on, then. So <laughs> we've got um we've got a couple of topics, and this is this is more about kind of like I suppose over since the reveal we've you probably saw it last week in the podcast when the boys were on it was like we've kind of run out of things to really discuss because we have this thing of we have to wait and see what's going to be announced and there's no point going too strong in one direction when we don't know the full like details yet of what's coming at Gamescom and stuff yeah. um so i do want to talk uh to you both spoonie and med about like you know your thoughts and the reveal obviously just for people obviously spoonie you've you know done a couple of videos uh talking about it let your feelings be known med you've been streaming and kind of reacted to all the trailers and stuff um but i do want to touch on that but I want to kind of mix it up this week um, and talk about something that we get a lot of requests to talk about. And it's probably something interesting that we can go on for a bit with. Um, and it is kind of the FIFA versus Pez debate because it's relevant. I think a lot of people are in a position this year where they might, you know, they might be taking notice of FIFA where they haven't had before. Like last year, you know, Pez 2021 was more of the same. We kind of knew what we were getting this year. FIFA be making a lot of right moves for offline players potentially, um, and I just want to start by by asking you, Spoonie. I mean, like, like what is it? What is it about? What is it about Pez that holds you to Pez? Like, what is it about Pez that like that you enjoy playing compared to FIFA? You know, what is it that FIFA doesn't do for you? Okay, so I I come from playing football games way back on the Spectrum One to Eight K 
first one of, one of the first games I played was Emin Hughes International Soccer, which was one of the sort of standouts at the time. Jesus, Probably man, over your head. your age now here. Come yeah, on. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Oh, so, <laughs> Anyways. So I, that's one playing... strike one Baz. strike one <laughs> so i've been yeah so i've been playing football games for quite some time and obviously i've played iss on the n64 um i've been playing fifa as well i play i always play both games i always give both games a try i always buy mm. both games um the majority of the time i always end up playing pez probably more often than not um i just feel like it's being closer to the real thing whilst also still remaining quite fun um the only times i i would say that's not happened is probably um pez 20 and pez 2021 they've gone for more realism rather than sort of fun i think mm. in in my opinion um and they sort of went for, went in a different direction which was great for offline players i think um uh, with all the mods and everything you can you can put into the game as you've probably seen night like, md's videos and stuff um and then but for the online players, for me, that falls flat. I, mm. I just couldn't play 20, 2020 or 2020 online at all. Um, whereas for the last time I really enjoyed the online play was 2018. It felt pretty pretty uh, fluid. But yeah, I've always um, sort of leant towards Pez um, just for the fact that, like I said, it was closer to the real thing. It was more fun. And there, there's been iterations where i mean the, like the last time when they switched engines uh mm. which was pez 2014 2015 were both tragic in my opinion they're mm. really bad for the series but that's where ea actually stepped up for once for me but i thought fifa 14 was excellent fifa 15 was slightly below that but still really good um uh, but then pez picked up again for me from 2016 so yeah it's it's it, I, I i'm not one to like pick a game i will play the best football game i'm not gonna be like that's why that's why my channel is called spoony pizzas it's not called mm. pez spoony pizzas e-football yeah. spoony pizzas fifa spoony pizzas it's like whichever football game hooks me then that's the game i'm just gonna play and i yeah. don't care about what people think about my channel content if they go ah oh, spoony's making loads of fifa content videos now like just deal with it i'm afraid sorry guys but um <laughs> you know that's what i want to do i'm not gonna play a game where that i'm not going to enjoy so yeah. if eFootball doesn't live up to expectation, um, then you know my 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 reservations still out on eFootball. Um, mm. Until I play it, I, I can't. I'm not going to say, "Oh, this is this is garbage." But mm. um, you know, but in terms of like choosing Pez or FIFA, I think um, yeah, Pez over the years has been the main one for me. Cool, man. And what about like Med? Obviously, you. Are the opposite side of the coin there? I mean, Spoonie is saying that he hasn't really played much online. You've predominantly played a lot of online over the last two years and I've really kind of, I suppose, like, you know, shunned this year as a content creator that's doing different things, you know, really consistent in your, your content and your streams, really good chat. And I think, you, like, anytime I go into your streams, you're enjoying the game. So what is it about, like, Pez 2021 that, like, keeps you playing like even when the content isn't there it is first of all thanks for the compliments again <laughs> um first of all um yeah it is the same thing as always since the first pass for me it's the ball physics this is uh the number one for me the the thing which uh, differences the pass from fifa it's unbelievable unbelievably uh realistic so it helps me a lot because i'm also playing football in real life so i can really good anticipate where the ball will fly and uh, where it will bounce and so on it's so realistic like in real life and this is the biggest difference for me in my opinion the the ball physics mm. and, and of that's course that, like you you've obviously sorry Wes, uh that's something that you've obviously like you've played so much in my club now do you think that like do you think that that the gameplay like and i know it always goes back to when we talk about fifa and pez like the gameplay is what holds you year on year on in like kind of that you haven't really tried fifa because of that initial you know the ball physics aren't where, what they need to be the player movement might not be where it needs to be the pace of the game online is way faster i think on in fifa even though i mean 101 rashford might have something to say about that in in my club but like, is it is it as simple as that for you that it's the gameplay that holds you to Pez every year? 
Um, yeah, I would say yes. It's it's exactly that. It's the gameplay. Yeah, I agree with you. This is also what I'm always uh, saying uh, in my in my own streams that my club level five gameplay is uh, not realistic. This is I call it cyborg football. Um, but if you play PES in my club on level three, what this is what I did before I started streaming. I only played mm. level three, and it's so realistic. It makes so much fun. Of course, level five makes also fun. This is. Yeah. Th th this is just a bit different, you know, it's faster, of course, and not that realistic, but but still way more realistic than FIFA. I'm also playing FIFA sometimes. I'm, I'm, I'm always trying it every year, ex especially the demo. I try to play it, I, I play it and I give it a chance always. And I played FIFA for six years from 1998 to 2003, 2004. I, I played both games. Um, and I also won a lot of tournaments in 2003 when I was a kid, <laughs> but um, I had a love for both games. But then from 2004 on, it was a difference for me in the gameplay. It was not, more, not any more realistic, the FIFA. Okay, cool. So, Wes, I mean, you've been sitting patiently there. I think that's the longest you've stayed quiet, so I'm proud of you. But... <laughs> I mean, like what the two boys are saying there, we've got two sides of the coin. We've got, you know, Spoonie, who's an offline predominant player. Yeah. We've got Med, who's an online predominant player. And as Pez has changed over the last couple of years, which we could all agree, you know, like I think it has changed in its focus of where it's gone. Yeah. Like you're coming in with a fresh pair of eyes, obviously. You've, everyone knows your uh, relationship with Pez and your experience with Pez, but mm -hmm. you've been playing a lot of FIFA. You know, you've been very open yeah. about your enjoyment of it. Like, yeah. On the other side of the coin, then, what is it about FIFA that has brought you over? Not saying that you've left the PES community or anything like that, because you haven't. Yeah, I've been exiled. But... <laughs> That's what's happened. I've, I've took a holiday. Yeah, but you know what I mean, is that, like, your playtime has been split favoring FIFA for the last, maybe, year with FIFA 21 in, in, in terms of how many hours you're playing and stuff. Oh, like, yeah. What has it been for you that FIFA is, you know, is what you're saying is your choice for the last couple of months? Well, in, t in terms of what it's been for me, it's the ability to earn your way through the game. Mm. Um, it's to be rewarded for playing the game. It's Yes, there are um, the, there's microtransactions in the game. Yep, fully understand that. Uh, obviously, in the last month or so, they've moved to having preview packs, which is obviously a, a great thing that they've moved to. Mm. So, you know, again, you know, their kind of quality of life changes, which I'm hoping they'll carry to FIFA 2022. Um, but it's the ability, it's the ability to, it's the replayability. It's the, okay, I can come on and I can go right six o'clock. There's going to be a new SBC or there's going to be a new objective. And there's something that I can earn by playing the game. It doesn't need to be, oh, well, I have to put my club coins in or I have to play through match day. It's like, no, you can go into squad battles. You can go and play the AI. You can go and do whatever to earn these players that you get. Um, you know, and in terms of FIFA itself, uh, and I, I will definitely take the point from Ned, quite rightly, it's not realistic. Mm. In no way, shape, or form. To me, it's like Space Jam. It's when you see Michael Jordan get stretched out by a Looney Tune. Anything is humanly possible in that game. Now, what tends to happen with the, the kind of the, the Pez side of social media, as it were, but at least that I see, is that people clip up these insane goals where people have done like 15 different skill moves yeah. and then and then the ball goes flying to the back of there and everyone's like, oh, well, this is totally unrealistic. It's like <laughs> that goal, I've never seen a goal like that on this game. Yeah. Like the, I saw the most, I only saw the fanciest goal when I played today, which was somebody basically rainbow flicked it and then like back healed it over my goalkeeper when he'd come out to slide out. That's about as close as I've seen to a skill move goal. Right? For me, it's the ability to go in and just earn your way in, you know. Mm. And there's fact there's something to do every day, and yeah. and maybe this is a case that my appetite has changed because you know, back when, as we've said before, historically, you'll go and you know you go around to your mates with the master league, or you'll go around to your pals with a with a saved team on your on your memory card, and then you'll go and play against his team that he's created through his master league. The appetites are totally different, or at least my appetite is totally different now. Mm. I want to be engaged with the game, like. All I ever see on a Monday or a Thursday is, ah, oh, here's our new featured players, and it's like, could you could you give us something? Could you give us something that's not featured players? Could you give us something? 
or you see, oh well, uh, go and try and get um, Nakamura out of a out of a coin only agent, and I'm like, well, what engagement is that going to do? Like, it it doesn't engage me if you're just saying to me, I just I just want you I want you to try and get this player, yeah. But there's no real way of getting them unless you're putting money into the game, yeah. And I think that's where the difference has has come for me this year is, yeah. You see that other side of the fence. You see how differently the other side is doing it. And it almost makes you know the side of the street that I'm normally on look like they're about ten years behind them. It's mm. it's 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 crazy. Yeah, but I I do think like from all your answers there, it does come back to that core issue. I think with Pez is like the gameplay versus content kind of. Mm. It's like... it's easier to forgive FIFA for the lack of realism and the lack of its good gameplay mm. when you have so much going on. That your eyes don't know where to look. It's yeah. a lot easier to yeah. forgive. It used to be very much the same side on on Pez as Spooner yourself, Med will probably you know say. It used to be the case of oh well, we haven't got the licenses, we haven't got this, but we've got the best gameplay, and that's what it used to be. And mm. then that column just seems to have completely imploded over the last you know two or three versions of the game. Mm. And it, and it's and and now we're at a precipice now where we're going onto a new console with a new game engine. And historically, it's not been a great jump between game engines. And now we're hoping that something is going to turn out vastly different. We can only judge what we've got at this point in time, which is the trailer, you know, the... the, the oh, I can't even say the Reddit post because we don't even know if it's genuine or not. So it's like, it's, like it's, it's more a case of they've released a trailer and then we're now all scratching around now going, well, okay, well, where's where, where's the rest of the info? Mm-hmm. And then when something magically pops up on Reddit, it's now just more misinformation that goes out there. So instead of there being that really united response that we saw when the trailer first dropped, yeah. instead now you've got people going, well, we can believe the Reddit post or we don't yeah. believe the Reddit post or we think that the trailer is this thing, but actually we think that this trailer's old or we think yeah. that this is this. Is this is a... yeah, you've yeah. got so many different splinters yeah. That the minute anything positive goes up about either game at this point, because I saw it with FIFA and I saw it with with um, with Fish's tweet, you know, anything that goes up that's remote, remotely positive about FIFA, it's just dumped on. And mm. I'm just like, you don't you don't need that game in gatekeeping. It doesn't yeah. just because somebody else is enjoying something you're not enjoying doesn't mean you therefore have the right or permission to go and then dump on what they're dumping on. It's just mm. it's not it's not fair. Yeah, and it's a thing, I'm glad you brought that up because that is a good point to talk about as well. And Spoonie Ahmed, I'll bring you guys back in here. I'll start with you, Spoonie. Like, why Like, why can't we all just get along, you know? I mean, why can't... Why, <laughs> why is it can't that... we be friends? <laughs> <laughs> why can't it be that, like... You know, as I've gotten older, and I think we've we've spoken about this on nearly every podcast, like, since I've gotten a bit older, I've, like, changed how I think about gaming and I've changed how I spend my free time. You know, obviously um and it's it's kind of at the point now where like i i want to play something that i actually enjoy and that i can escape to rather than you know when you're a young fella you have like six seven hours that you can just play games and you know play a master league season after season or whatever like spoonie why do you think it is like why do you think that that rivalry is still there when you know, EA and Konami are probably in are going completely different routes, at least for this year. Like, at least for this year that, you know, they're going completely different routes. Um, why do you think that that's still there, as Wed said, like that? It, there seems to be almost a reluctance to, you know, give EA props for things that they do if you play PES and, you know, vice versa. Vice versa. Uh... Yeah, vice versa as well. You know, it's, it's, it's as good or bad as whichever way that you want to look at it, you know? Like, why, why, in your opinion, do you think that that's still there, Spoonie? Oh God, that's a million dollar question. Right? <laughs> that's a lot bloody of hell. Put... Yeah, bloody hell. Um, it's a bit like choosing between Messi and Ronaldo. You know, everyone's that's got an opinion. Point, yeah. And it's and it's a bit like a religion. Like Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like mm. it's literally like a religion. Like you're either, you know, Pez or you're FIFA and that's it. You know, you mm. can't be both, you can't so many hop sides. For me, I don't care. i if I if Look, I'm looking at FIFA 20. I've done a few side by side comparisons. I've been looking at the hypermotion tech, hypermotion tech, and it looks absolutely incredible. Mm. And um, you know, you still get you know the Pez Pez player base. Absolutely, like in my comments, I get like loads of comments absolutely slating FIFA. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. EA haven't done themselves 
justice over the last few years. They they bring out these pitch notes. I remember the last year, I looked at the pitch notes thinking, cool, this sounds amazing. They, they, I think they brought like three three different pitch notes out, and it sounded like the game was going to completely change. You played the game, and it was actually worse than probably FIFA 20, I think, in mm. in a way. I think, so in some ways. For me, I think it's better than FIFA 20. Um, but when I when I look at FIFA 21, um, yeah, you get some really ridiculous things, you know, where it, the, you've probably seen it, where they juggle the ball between the side to side with their feet or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they're like hovering off the ground. I mean, yeah, it's unrealistic. But who cares if you're having fun, right? And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I see these, I see these ridiculous skillful goals on fifa i just think god that's pretty cool i wish i could do that yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> it's it's fun it's fun yeah you know, and that's it's not realistic yeah and i think that's what a lot of people do kind of miss the point of is that video games are designed to be fun if you're not enjoying mm-hmm. it as much for example med who i'm hopefully in the edit you're going to put him above me right yeah he's above you he's above oh, i'm thank you thank you so <laughs> yeah so, uh, so so med for example med enjoys playing my club med enjoys it vastly great all power to him but that's not me gonna go into his stream and go you know i think pez is terrible i think the online experience is awful like why what does that serve me it doesn't serve me anything it certainly doesn't serve him anything Mm. like you know what i mean like it's again my my particular take on why i think this thing still exists Mm -hmm. is i think you have a lot of pez fans i think it's more pez than it is fifa in the sense of fans that want to go and dump on the other one because nine times out of ten now it's the kids now that'll just turn and go ah fifa's clear Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah yeah like Mm -hmm. yeah pez is washed or whatever whatever the fancy phrase is on twitter with pez it seems to be a case of that people are hurt that the series isn't where it used to be Mm. and it seems to be that they want to kind of try and drag it into this kind of dog fight when as you pointed out, Baz, the EA are in a completely different yeah. zone to yeah. to where Pez is or where eFootball is. And I think that there's that willingness to still have a scrap about it. Like there has to be like this tribe like you said, there has to be like this tribalism spoony mm-hmm. where it's well, I you don't like what I like, so I'm 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 just gonna shout at you. It's like <laughs> no, that's that's not how that's not how civilized discourse works. Like it's just not how it works. Nope. Um but yeah, that that's my that's my two cents on it. I don't know what you think, Med. I'm with you. I'm definitely with you. <laughs> uh, do you like? Do you see? Do you see a lot of that because you stream and like you're in real time? You know, act like you're reacting to stuff in real time, Ed. Like compared to you know maybe doing a YouTube video or doing a podcast where we can kind of think about our stuff and we're not dealing with comments all the time and stuff. Like, do you do you see a bit of that that people come in and they're like, you know, why are you playing Pez? Like, why not try FIFA? Or is it is it more kind of yeah, I um, you know that people just the, accept that you're playing Pez now. This happens in uh, almost every stream <laughs> that uh, <laughs> people are joining and asking me why are you playing Pez and not FIFA. Then um, yeah, I can, can always say the same. Yeah, just tell Pardon? them it's because of Wes. Yeah, just blame me for it next time. Man. If you ever play FIFA, just blame me, and then they'll come at me <laughs> yeah. and, say, and say you've corrupted our favorite streamer. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but do you find Med, that like that's like that's just going to be around forever? That FIFA versus Pez debate. I think so, mm. but in my opinion, you can play both games. You don't need to decide for one. Mm. Mm-hmm. Totally stop agree. talking sense, man. Come on, stop talking logical sense. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say we bring people onto this podcast to have a fight. No, I'm joking. We don't. We don't. We explicitly don't. But no, it, it's it's um yeah it's it, yeah that debate is still gonna rage. But th- I think what's what's gonna get what's gonna happen is is that that comparison or the comparison to each other is gonna get worse as time goes on. Yeah. Because eFootball seems to be lining itself up to. I wouldn't say mimic, but it's certainly looking to lean into some of the stuff that FIFA are doing. For example, the match pass you've got. I mean, granted, they've gone cross play, and fair enough that you know that's another discussion for another day. We've we you know we've heard all we need to hear mm. about the, the cross play discussions. But it's like they they seem to be leaning more into it, which is fine. You can lend from your competitors, but if you don't execute it to the equal standard, if not better, mm-hmm. expect your fan base to be annoyed when you don't implement it correctly. Yeah, like that. Indeed. That's uh, it's all. It's always about the execution of these things. Like you know, I could say that I'm going to marry Scarlett Johansson in the morning, but like if I don't meet her, then there's no chance of me marrying her, is there? <laughs> so it's like 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like I can I can wish something into the atmosphere, but it's never if you, if you know if I'm not in where great she example. Is, do you know what I mean? Like you know you could say anything, and that's why I I always refer to their the the trailer and the even the stuff that we saw from FIFA the other day. I I regard it as marketing fluff because until I see a game in front of me, all it is is fluff. Yeah. Because we've seen from from games past we've seen demos to bait or betas to demos to full game and games be vastly different it's the same with the fifa demos fifa demo is great nine times out of ten then it gets its feedback and then all hell breaks loose Mm -hmm. because people are like well it doesn't play it doesn't play like this in foot you know and Mm -hmm. it's like oh well awesome great now we're gonna have you know essentially racquetball Mm -hmm. which is essentially what the ball physics are like on fifa but yeah yeah it's just it's that tribalism that gets me every time because it's just I, I I just find it so trivial because it's like I think somebody said it to me today. If you've got more, I think somebody's mentioned it to me on Twitter. If you've got more concern about what somebody else is playing in your spare time, that's more on you than it is on what they're doing. You know what yeah, I mean? Definitely. Yep. I mean it is. It's a it's a true thing. But like as you said there, uh, Wes, like it's I think it's always going to be a case of there is going to be that rivalry there because people have grown up with it. And I think the newer fans coming through, I mean, Ricky, Ricky had a very good point in last week's podcast and Vern, when we were talking about the demographic change and, you know, and how this game Pez hasn't been, you know, like hasn't been Pez since I would say master league online, since they kind of brought in my club, it's kind of been a different thing. Now, don't get me wrong. I think it's been an excellent change. My club has been very popular. The co-op, the three-player co-op is very good. Um, the team lobby, when it works, is is fun. There's a lot of stuff there that's not really highlighted, you know, that could be highlighted, that's not been, like, put out there. But I do like the changes that they've made. But one of the things, to me, is that people do get caught up with, like, you can't, as Spoonie said, you like you you can't you, like. There's nothing stopping anyone from playing both. You know what I mean? Like that's the thing. It's like, it's kind of like the Xbox versus the PS5, you know, yeah. discussion. And it's like, well, if you're not getting a PS5 simply because you know you love Xbox and you want to play Xbox and all that, like you're you're missing out on some cracking games. You know what I mean? That, like, yeah. mm-hmm. not even giving yourself the chance to buy them. You know that kind of way, like Spider Man and The Last of Us and games like that, where. I think that's that's a similar thing that everyone should try it. If it's not for them, it's not for them. Simple as that. But I think people get just caught up with that. I'm automatically buying, you know, this game this year and that's it. Whereas I think that's probably going to change this year. And I want to I want to move on and talk about kind of like a bit of eFootball, right? We have to start calling it eFootball now and get used to that because that's where the game is going. But I'm calling it its old name. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not I will die on this hill. I will die on this hill. No, I'm joking. I'm gone. Yeah, but like we're we're going like I I want to ask you guys and Med. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you first to 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 give me your thoughts on eFootball and the change that that they're making and i know that you've gone over on your streams and you've been vocal on twitter and stuff we all have at this stage but do you feel now is the time that you know konami need to embrace this change that they're doing and just go for it or like like what are your overall thoughts with the eFootball stuff like what and the future of pez or the future of eFootball? sorry so first of all I can understand that a lot of people are disappointed, yes, mm-hmm. but we, all of us, waited for the crossplay function. All of us. Mm-hmm. So it was a big wish from all of us. And now, where Konami is implementing this option, everybody is complaining, you know? Mm-hmm. And this is something which I can't, can't understand and, and doesn't want to understand because. We just need to give it a try. I know the people uh, are concerned about uh, the mobile gaming stuff, especially if you are matched with your PlayStation or Xbox against a mobile gamer. But no one of us knows how this will work. No one of us. So we didn't test it. We didn't try it. So we can't make a rating for that. So in this case, I would be more happy than concerned in this topic because it's a pro, it's not a con in my, in my opinion. Crossplay function will be amazing. I, I, can, I can imagine that we will have really 
really short waiting times, matchmaking times. And this could be really great. Also, um, the match pass system, the new my club system, which is incoming. Yeah, I am a rare player. I am not buying coins, as you know, maybe, guys. So it could be really hard for me. But even I am really looking forward to see uh, the changes which will come because we all of us also waited for new content and this is new content so we will see what will bring Konami, what will Konami bring us you know as a new content and um, these are the pros in my opinion the con is the graphics for sure for sure when Konami brought uh, brought out the online Get new online game performance test was it this the name <laughs> um, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, right. we, we thought this is just a beta or alpha test you know this is not the game but when we saw the trailer it was exactly that what they presented us and yeah therefore i am a bit concerned that they will bring out a game with this graphics especially because yeah we need to be able to play to play with mobile gamers so we uh, yeah mm. the graphics can't be like this on playstation 5 if you're playing against a mobile gamer so i'm concerned about that and if if the graphics will be really like that it will be hard for me to en enjoy the game i'm serious and mm. i i am not a fan of really great and top graphics this is not the most important thing for me and it it never was you know mm. but if it's like that it will be really hard for me to accept it i'm yeah i'm just yeah. honest yeah that's a good point i mean like spoonie as meta is saying there like i think that's everyone's concern about the mobile aspect of it we obviously as Med said as well, we don't know how it's going to work. And I think some people have already written off, you know, PES this year or eFootball this year because they're saying, you know, how is it going to function with mobile? How is it going to have everything compatible? Like, there is equally potential that there might be a filter that you can only play a PS5 versus PS5 with a true next-gen experience. And I say that because, you know, we don't know. That is a possibility. Until we're told, mm -hmm. that's definitely not happening, that... This is going to be, yeah, you can turn off crossplay, but it's still going to be a pared down graphical experience, at least for the first 12 months before they add like a high res pack. I've mentioned before with Warzone on the PS5, you have these, you know, these optional high res packs. They're about, I think they're about 12 gig or each or something like that. And they don't make a massive difference to the game, but you, you, it feels like you're playing a PS5 game rather than a PS4 game. You know, it's nearly three times or four times the frame rate. The graphics are way better. It's way smoother. The guns look better. Everything looks way fresher. So, like, that is a potential as well. But is that your biggest concern as well, like, from an offline point of view, that you feel, like, like what is your, big, what is your biggest concern, I suppose? I'll ask you. Okay. That. Yeah, no, that's, that's right. Um, no, you see, I'm old school, very old school. So graphics for me aren't a massive thing. It's all mm -hmm. about the gameplay for me. If the... If the graphics, look, the new football game graphics for me weren't that bad. And mm -hmm. the reason I say that is uh, with a bit of a pause. Is I like because, the pause there. Yeah. I was yeah. <laughs> the reason he, was, pause, he was waiting for me and you, yeah. Med. He was waiting for me and you. <laughs> He's waiting for Med to come in and clock him on. <laughs> <laughs> three, three or four months ago, I found out that Unreal 5 Engine wasn't going to be ready. Maybe mm -hmm. due to COVID or we don't know held up their development maybe konami planned to un <clears throat> unleash it on unreal 5 engine and then mm. realized it wasn't going to be ready in time as yeah. soon as it, as soon as i discovered out it was going to be the unreal 4 engine the unreal 4 engine can look really good but mm. it's nothing compared to unreal 5 when yeah. you look at the original first trailer that to me looked like it was done on with the intent of unreal 5 mm. that if you look at the face builds and all the rest of it yeah so as soon as i found out it was unreal 4 my expectation went right down. So I was mm -hmm. sort of prepared for not next-gen graphics. You're not going to get next-gen graphics with UA4. You're going to get very, very good graphics if you've played the likes of, um, I don't know, there's like Far Cry or whatever. Um, I think it was made during, 
on the Unreal 4 engine. So for me personally, I knew the graphics weren't going to come in hot. <laughs> so I was like scaling that aspect that right back. Um, my problem or my concern was, was that new football game open beta. If I hadn't played that and just saw the trailer and saw the cross play, which was pretty shocking, um, you know, but some of those fears with the cross play have been alleviated. I'll touch on that in a bit. But if I pl if I didn't play the new football game open beta, that trailer, I could just like just sort of let it go. Mm -hmm. um, just be like, ah, oh, it's a trick. Like I never buy a game based on a trailer. I mean, that's the worst trailer I've ever seen for Pez. Probably one of the worst trailers I've ever seen, period, for yeah. any game ever. Yeah. Mm. Um, but it's just the fact that um, the fact that I played that new football game open beta and I really didn't like it. Um, some aspects I liked, some some aspects I didn't. Um, some of the dumbed down controls was probably one of the most concerning things. Mm. Obviously, we got more information after that through um some of their producers and stuff to say you know the graphics will be scaled mm -hmm. based on platform so you know that was one of my concerns i was thinking oh god are the are the graphics really going to be that scaled back because when we played that new football game open beta you know messi had his lego haircut and that looked like it being pulled from <laughs> pulled from the bloody mobile game you know because that was our initial our initial impression for most people like you mm. played that game and you thought cool this is like playing a mobile game you know, you had the giant cursor under your players and all the rest of it. It felt like a mobile game. Yeah. And the the dumbed down control sort of it was like as soon as that as soon as that trailer came along and you felt you know, you sort of hark back when you had that cross play bit, you sort of looked back and thought, Oh my god, I played with the dumbed down controls. This is why it was like a penny just dropped again. We are just playing a mobile version of the mm. game, but mm. to be honest, the, the the graphics are going to be scaled on platform. They've already said that, so it's not going to look great. It's not Unreal Five. It's not going to be next gen. I wouldn't say it's not going to be a next gen experience. But um, going forward, next year, year after, whatever, they will port it over to the Unreal Five engine, and they'll be able to do a lot more with it. So I think this is this is going to be a very bumpy, <laughs> bumpy um, road mm. initially. But I think um, over time, they might be able to get to grips with the Unreal Engine. And hopefully, you know, at the end of the day, it's standard gameplay. If they can tweak that gameplay, which they said they would. They have said they would in the in the initial notes. I had um, a little bit of a pre-warning from Konami to say, look, tell your viewers that, you know, this is uh, just purely a a network test mm -hmm. and that the and that the um, and that tell them not to focus too much on the gameplay which you know when you play it, it's like hard not to focus on the gameplay when you realize mm. that is the actual game and people are like yeah. going oh don't worry this is this isn't the game i was like um yeah it is <laughs> yeah this is the game um so hopefully they can tweak the gameplay make it smoother make it more responsive there are some things i i really really liked about it i i that some people might disagree with was like the secondary press the way that you had the defender was far more manual. Mm. It was like there was none of this. Oh, you know, hold the X button, charge in like a rhino, win the ball. Ah, you, you know, there's there's actually a bit of skill to it, mm. and the the matches fe felt far less chaotic without that secondary player press. So yeah. you couldn't get two players to press the ball at the same time, which probably wouldn't happen in real football anyway. You don't get two players charging the ball. Well, sometimes you if you got gig and press and mm. you're uh, in your Jurgen Klopp or whatever, but generally you teams press by pressing um individual players like almost like a man marking system you wouldn't set two players to one player and leave another player free you'd you'd push up as a whole team and you'd your players would go and press players surrounding that player to try and stop them passing the ball out so yeah uh it's it was to sum it up um yeah it was, it was the worst trailer ever um <laughs> But, um, you know, I couldn't believe that guy came out and said about the photorealism. I mean, the audacity to, to come out with that stuff was just mind boggling. <laughs> um, I was just, they were just setting themselves up to fail. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the thing, the thing of where I'm at now that we're a couple of weeks after the reveal and having a bit of information and stuff like, I think the biggest thing that people, and, and it's, it's, it's nobody's fault because, 
I think the communication out and the information, the way it's dropped and stuff, that it's been scattered around and, you know, like, for instance, we don't even know what the new modes are going to be called and stuff. So it's understandable for people to be frustrated with that and have issues with that. You know, that is understandable, you know. So I think it's just that Konami are looking at this. The more I've thought about it and the more people I've talked to, I think Konami are looking at this now in a completely different light than the yearly sports title. You know what I mean? Like you've probably got nine months to develop a sports title between beta testing it, private testing it, going gold, distributing it, you know, shipping it, everything. You know, like that's kind of a nine month period or a 10 month period where you go from FIFA 20 to FIFA 21 or PES 20 to PES 21. Whereas with this, I think... I think that, you know, Konami are looking at this as when they're talking about photorealistic graphics and they're talking about, you know, next gen visuals and animations and all this. I think they're talking about what like the like what this game is going to become over time. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's yeah. like do you know what I'm saying? I, I know that's a bit of a Yeah, I, I was just gonna know, say <laughs> it, 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 it's it's kind of this this is no longer like we we kind of know that this is no longer uh, a yearly sports title Wes. do you know what i'm saying yeah. like we we've kind of spoken about this like off podcast as well me and you where you take the fortnite model or the warzone model it's like you know there's updates for fortnite that are bigger in size than when fortnite first released do you know what i mean in like yeah. gigabytes wise and it's like fortnite is not the game it was a couple of years ago when it launched compared to now you know what i'm no. saying yeah that's and, true I think that's the way Konami are looking at this. I just think the messaging has been so all over the place that people were expecting, you know, for example, when they talked about Master League, I think people were probably expecting to get like a full next gen, you know, football manager slash, you know, next gen Pez style Master League. It's like they've been working on it for three years. Oh, yeah. Whereas I think... You know what I'm saying? Whereas I think Konami's way of thinking about it, and again, I'm just playing devil's advocate as I'm oh, like I know. here. Oh, I know. You know. I know you love to. I know yeah. you love to. <laughs> I mean, I love to. I love to just throw it up so you can smash me down. But yeah, well, I think I'm, it's, I'm it's, it's it like the games as a service now. I think that's what they're looking at as a like, I have it written down here. What is it? Yeah. So like, they're looking at this as, you know, they have no restrictions on their, or deadlines on their development. Do you know that kind of way? So if they yeah, want to add yeah. something, instead of having to either make the decision as they did with PES 2021, this is either going to make the cut for release for September last year, or it's not, and we'll have to push it back to next year. Now they're thinking, well, we can add that three months after launch, but it's a massive feature. It's a transfer market in my club, or it's a, a new game mode. Yeah, it doesn't matter. There's no... Which, yeah, I mean, you know, which, is, which is all well and good. However, you can't do that with the key modes of the game. You can't mm. do it. I like. I'm sorry. Like with the greatest of respect to the world, the fact that at the la and again, I say this with the with the, you know with with love in my heart, right? I don't play Master League anymore, mm. but I still feel the anger of the Master League players of the world, yeah. like oh, yeah. the outpouring of anger and frustration about the fact that the key game mode that has carried you through since the days of uh, international superstar soccer on the snares is now just relegated to a dlc like mm. I, I know that me and spoonie had like a uh, not i wouldn't even well, it was just a it was just a a, a, a it was a war point. It yeah, was yeah, a war. Was, yeah it was carnage there was blood <laughs> everywhere <laughs> like i hope, it, you, it was, I hope you put him in his place but it, but it was but it was a case of me it, i think it was the tweet it, you started it it was the tweet <laughs> it was the tweet it was the tweet that went out when he was talking when we were talking about dlc and how much it's it's you know how much it's paid for or how much you should pay for it mm. and i i look at it as a standpoint of well, if the online players are getting it for free, and bearing in mind your big marketing thing is that it's free to play, you shouldn't be then charging offline players for the game modes that they want to play. Like that um, that's not a thing. Like you can't splash it all over going, it's free to play, it's free to play, it's free to play. Because in truth, it's not free to play. If your Spoonie wants to go and do a Master League whenever they arbitrarily decide to release it, you've still got to go and pay for it. Like and anybody who wants to play Mastic has still got to pay for it. I take the point that yeah, okay, well if they're paying for it, then it, it, you know that must mean that there's some type of advancements there, which is all well and good. Mm. But it, if it arrives in whatever arbitrary time it did, or when they were saying about the the you know oh it's fall or it's winter or yeah, yeah, you know, map when when the when the moon lines up with the sun or whatever it comes up with, <laughs> like like it all comes down to 
it, is it worth it? And then if it then drops and it's not worth it, then you're going to have a bunch of offline players going, wait a minute, I've waited since release for this. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so yeah. as as much yeah, as that's, uh, a, that's a good point. Yeah, and and you can't you can't have it always and always. And just to kind of you know some of the game modes they didn't mention, which I know Meds Chats kind of mentioned about you know some of the stuff. You know, for example, co-op. You'd imagine it's still in the game. Yeah. But maybe. but but there's no there's nowhere that says that it is. Mm. Like there's that, that's what I'm saying. So it's yeah. it's. Well, I said it in the interview. They touched on in the interview about making it very easy to join your friends in like eleven v eleven and three v three and all that. Yeah. yeah, which which is great. Which is great if they are alluding to it. But the, yeah. the, and again, with all the information that we've had, we've we've all we've all had to make sense of it. We've mm. there's not been just an up and down of this is where the game is and this is what's yeah. going to be in it. There, yeah, there's no up and down list. Like there's no like oh okay well I know that co-op's in there I know Mask League's in there I know Become a Legend's in there I know there's some type of my club but I know that there's this that and the other that's in there there's no like itemized list it's just mm. well we're all gonna drip feed in interviews and you can interpret what you want to interpret from it and that ain't good enough mm. and I know it rolls back to that same point of it's communication and it's communication it, it it's all of it if you're not communicating with your fan base that's why we sit here you know weekly going. This isn't good enough because mm. we're having to get the likes of Spoonie, Vern, Ricky, Med, like all these people on because we're all trying to make sense of something that should be very, very easy mm. to make sense of. It should very much just be black and white. There it is. Not to mention the fact we don't even know where edit mode's going to be. Mm. Like it's just like yeah. one of your key points, which again, as as Spoonie alluded to earlier, you talk about patches and you talk about edits and and again this isn't a specifically pez universe thing this goes out to any kit maker on the face of the earth it goes to any editor on the face of the earth you have no edit mode at the start you have mm. no you have no way of making your patches you're gonna have to wait until you know until yeah, such time mean. and it's like it's it's just it's why why have we yeah. got to wait until then for a game mode that's been in the game from launch in previous years, why mm. why have we gone to this weird model when it when it's just like just just allow the community to do what they need to do? Like there's no there's no logical reason unless they're turning around and going, well, actually we're going to release an edit mode. It's going to have a steady creator. It's going to have backboard creation. It's going to have all of these brand new fancy things. I can understand why they might be hiding away, but historically. There hasn't really been any advancements on edit mode. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, not since yeah, it's pretty much the same different techniques and different ways of doing things. But yeah, yeah I think same, ma- yeah. Minus, minus the minus the kit template, which sometimes changes. Yeah, well, that marginally. changes. That's changed a lot over the years. Yeah. Yeah, but that's oh. the one aspect of it. All the other details that go into edit mode, they're all the same. So yeah. why don't you just plug it in? Yeah. Plug it in. Allow the community to do what they need to do. Because I hate to say it, but. You get you get med on a stream, for example. Med, would you would you play a game of Pez without an option file? I am doing it uh, right now, but uh, yeah, without the option a... to have the option file, oh, we would lo- uh, we would lose a lot of players. Mm. Yeah, because you've got a lot of people who rely on having the proper kits, the proper badges. You get little Timmy down the street. Then he wants to play at Aston Villa because it's a point. It's a point that's very close to my heart at the moment because the the Grealish news is still fresh and I'm still trying to like this is this is therapy for me. But it's like little Timmy down the street wants to go and play at Aston Villa, but instead he's met with West Midlands Village and two unicorns with a claret badge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it it like it is it is a hard one to swallow, especially at launch because it's the next gen, next gen of consoles and people will, will look at that straight away. Uh, I think I think the way around it is. You know, Konami and Med, just to bring you back in here as well, because like you're probably a great example of where the community, not where the community is, but where a large portion of new Pez gamers are. I know you're not a new Pez gamer. I'm not saying that, but in terms of guys that have come over in the last couple of years to my club and they've seen the attraction of, you know, the iconic moments, the legends, the feature players where you can get a stacked team very easily and compete at a very high level with a bit of training or a couple of hours played online. Like, for you with this model, somebody that is probably craving content and craving new ways to play the game with your community, for your community, like, what do you think of the model in in terms of them releasing stuff like every couple of months rather than waiting a year 
to release the next you know iteration of the title like that there's going to be no pez 23 pez 24 it's just going to be e-football massive updates over the years and then it's going to morph into whatever it morphs into like over time like is that something that you're remaining positive about was it to me yeah yeah sorry man. oh sorry. I, I thought sorry. it was to spoony i'm sorry <laughs> sorry man sorry <laughs> Could you repeat the question, please? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, this, this, this podcast is over. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. I'm sorry. What, he, what, what, was <laughs> was it, what was it? Sum it up to me, was it? What was it? Essentially, it essentially, what he was trying to say there, Med, is is it a positive, you know, are you looking forward there to there being kind of more rapid updates to the game as opposed to the data packs that we sometimes see every couple of months, maybe? Like, you know, the fact that they've moved to the Unreal Engine, they have a lot more kind of flexibility in working with what they have. You know, as a as a guy who is looking for that new piece of content or looking forward to more content, is that something that is a positive for you? Uh, I think when Konami does it right, it could be really positive for, for uh, content creators, uh, but also for the community. So um, you will... Be all, always be uh, curious, you know. You want to know what will come next. This is not like uh, like PES 21, for example. You you know what will happen. You know what will come next Monday. You will you know what will come next uh, Thursday. It will be the uh, the over 4,000 cups. <laughs> the I don't know. Always the same. Sometimes we are getting the ranking challenge, uh, like right now. It's something yeah special, but um, even that that it, it isn't uh, special uh, we like it we like the content so i can imagine that when konami brings new content like that and they will be flexible like that it could be good for us but also for uh, konami too mm. but they need to yeah, do it right of course yeah because i think what they're looking to do now is to like think of Balpez as a model that like they can just constantly update rather than you know like that if there is something that they want to add they don't have any more restrictions or any more deadlines do you know that kind of way that it's like okay mm -hmm. well we need to add this that could be great for different modes but again it, it does depend on how they implement that you know there's no point them saying yeah this frees us up that we don't have any more deadlines and that they can make for example the game could come out in september they could have a huge update in December when the crossplay comes, and mm. then they could decide to have a massive update in March. Like that would never happen before because it would be too close to the new game launching. Yep. Whereas now they'll have no reason not to do that. So, like for you, a guy that streams and plays my club and stuff, like you're probably you you could have potentially like a huge social aspect of that as well, where instead of it being a huge ordeal to get guys into your games or like play a three v three cup challenge match against you know a couple of your subscribers or something mm -hmm. or take on spoonie in a 3v3 and show him how online you know is done you know yeah <laughs> like you could do that instead of it being the big ordeal that it is now and setting up team lobbies and all these issues like and then you have to think about oh well there's a guy over in brazil that wants to play he can't he's region locked this could be a case where you press r2 or you press l2 and it's like boom bring up your friends yeah. quick invite into a lobby you're in within two or three minutes into a game Similar yeah. to how all games really are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ways, True. You know what I mean? Most yeah. games yeah. are like that. So yeah. for you, Med, I mean, is that something like that? Like, is, is that kind of like a, a massive potential for you as well that you'd like to see them do as well? Like the social aspect of it? Definitely. Uh, uh, definitely. I, I think so. I think so. It could be from the social aspect also be good for me, for, for, all, for, for all the good content creators. Mm. Definitely. And even for you, Spoonie, I mean, that could be something that I know you've live streamed a bit before. I'm not forgetting you with the live streaming, but your bread and butter is usually YouTube, you know, tutorials, master yep. leagues, like mods, all that sort of stuff. That could be something as well for you on, like, if I was to give a hit or like something that like a hypothetical situation, how that would impact an offline player is, you know, master league could become that you have in-game challenges or you have certain challenges other than, an interview at the start of the season was like, we want you to win it all this year. And your three options are, you know, <laughs> I'm going to do it. Or like, do you know what I mean? It doesn't make a difference what you're saying back to the chairman or anything. 
this could be yeah. a thing where you know maybe for example you could invite one of your your subscribers in or a long-term supporter of yours yeah. in to play a match a title yeah. defining match in your master league and you know what i mean like yeah. you can have a co-op or, that's what i'm kind of thinking of yeah. and i know it's wishful thinking it's 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 massively wishful thinking because the last podcast i was on i was kind of down in the dumps i was like oh like this is obviously me playing devil's advocate yeah. as I like to do compared yeah, to Wes, yeah. who's Mr. Negative, you know? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, 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 having, I'm having that. I'm having that. Listen, listen. I'll cut I, that. I'll cut that. In know, post, it's fine. It's fine. You can leave it. In. Um, no, I'm no, only joking. I, I, like, think, I, think the, I, think, I think that there are, ele- and I said this before, there are elements to what they have told us so far that are positive. Mm. The issue is, is that the delivery of the message has been so negative that it's then caused it's then just overridden everything. Yeah. The elements yeah. of crossplay that, that you guys that. have alluded to is brilliant. The fact mm. that yes, you know, um you know, the fact that you can go and play with Xbox users, which has been a, a fan base who have been kind of left in the wilderness because Microsoft don't allow option files, so they've not mm. really been able to kind of play. That and the fact that there's not really a lot of PES players who play on Xbox you know, you've got the fact that the PC guys are now going to be able to come in and start playing. Of course, if there is some type of anti-cheat system there, that would be very handy. Mm-hmm. Um, again, and, and at the point about mobile, like I, I saw some comments in relation to this, in relation to, you know, mobile users kind of being like, well, hey, hold on a minute. We're, we're as legitimate gamers as you are. And that is perfectly yeah, true. Definitely, yeah. Absolutely true of, of the system, because when you look at the numbers, the mobile fan base completely dwarfs mm-hmm any other fan base you can put you can put you can put you know playstation xbox pc all together still wouldn't scratch the surface Mm. of of your mobile players and i don't i don't necessarily think there are any issues if you play pez on mobile i don't think there is realistically i think what the issue has become is that and it's kind of been kind of combined is is that people have saw the element of crossplay immediately jump to the the point of okay well if i'm on a ps5 i can play somebody on a mobile yeah and that's where people are going well wait a minute and i think it was Vern that kind of alluded to this where it's like well hold on a minute is this gonna are they gonna use the same base of game to, yeah. to play yeah, each other and it's like yeah and it's like and and you know if they you know if konami or whoever came out in the morning and went actually there's a filter system that says that you can only play x players or y players you might wait a little bit longer for a game but it means you can play those players yeah I tell you what, everyone would be absolutely delighted because the mobile mobile players would be like, oh, okay, sweet. Well, I can play the 400 million player pool of mobile players. You know, PlayStation players would then go, sweet, we can go play against Xbox players. The PC gamers would be like, well, sweet, we've got a dedicated place to go and play PC players. Mm. If you've got that freedom, then crossplay crossplay is a brilliant thing. Uh, You know, free to play. I know that um, Fish uh, uh, had mentioned it on on a different podcast. You've got pockets of the world that can't actually afford game consoles and can't actually afford the game. And it's actually becoming incredibly accessible because you can just play it on your phone and you can go and play your pals that have got PlayStations, yeah. you know, parts of South America, parts of like, you know, East Asia, places like that that don't have, a, you know, access. This does free them up. This does add them into a complete different playable because, you know, there might be people who can't shell out, you know, 60, 70 quid for a new, you know, game and then they can't shell out you know 450 quid for a new console or yeah. whatever the equivalent is it, where you live so there are aspects to it that are positive it's just it it's the overwhelming kind of negative that's mm. kind of come with it and i, yeah. I can see there for uh mike harlow is just putting a point about you know the fact that the dedicated servers like if we're gonna you know potentially get that that yeah, that would be great as well yeah. it, you'd have so to get it for what you for what you're looking imagine, at imagine like you know but um, if you dedicated servers like it is you know i know and again i think gamers are very quick to think like because when i when i told my friend that it was going to be mobile he like he immediately was like oh like candy crush and i'm like well i hope it's not you know i hope it looks <laughs> better than candy crush you find three have... you find three messes you delete half your squad yeah you <laughs> but people have like preconceptions of you know when you say mobile people think of certain things when you say free to play they think of a lesser experience like you know, I always go back to Warzone. You know, Warzone is a triple A experience, really, when you look at it. That's a free to play title that you don't have to spend a bob on. Do you know what I mean? And I think it's the same with Pez that when you have those like pre or misconceptions, well, they're not misconceptions, but 
there are things that you think of and how you associate different things like with mobile with free to play like if you've got dedicated servers and they go down that route like it, it doesn't just mean like like online stability like it opens up a brand new like way of interacting that like i think again when we are sticking on the positive gravy train here for the minute which a lot of people might not like and they want doom and gloom like i think the idea of you know being able to get into a party with somebody that's on xbox and you know get into a group with yeah. them go through the transfer market in the game with them while they're in your party like a share play type of thing where you can go mm -hmm. in and scout different players yeah. oh you know you have to step out for a minute the missus wants you to go down and get some milk and bread or whatever grand i can just continue on on my phone you know what i mean while i'm waiting in the shop or 10 minutes outside the shop i'm waiting i can just whip out my phone search up that player that i was looking for and even for someone like you spoonie that i know master league isn't going to come at launch we kind of all know that now yeah. that it's probably going yeah. to be in the new year whenever it is yeah. January, but like February, for somebody yeah. like you that everything would be self-contained in the game you know so you could pretty much like you know you're working you're on the road or wherever whatever you're doing and like you can get out your mobile you can start researching players you can start adding them to your watch list looking at their stats you know talking about them and putting screenshots into your discard all from your phone you head home then you load up your game on your ps5 or your pc and you've all your progress that you've made on your mobile all your scouting all your like do you know all that sort of stuff out of the way so yeah. you can jump in and just a five minute brief reintroduction and say lads so this is what we did today on our mobile when we were waiting for such and such boom here's who we're targeting this is what their negotiation is like all that stuff sounds brilliant but it just depends how they do it you know that kind of way yeah, yeah i was gonna say to bring you back down to the negative part of earth right <laughs> here he goes it's, here, it's he goes. here, we, go. here you, we go you are you are trusting you are trusting kanami to implement these types of things when we have a track record yeah of, that's it of a fan base who is being let down at launch mm. now yeah, granted point too that 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 and, and 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 it goes back to that point i always make which is is you, you know your future expectations are always defined by your past experiences mm -hmm. because of because that goodwill barrier has kind of just been eroded as time's gone on which has even kind of been exacerbated by we saw a teaser trailer then we see the actual trailer and they're two they look like they're two separate games that then becomes a thing where you go well okay great this is another year. Now, they might come out of the box in fall or autumn or winter or whatever they're coming back with. They might come out of the box. They might come out of the box and they might smack it out of the park and they might be like, actually, do you know what? This is the next-gen thing that we promised. This is that yeah. next-gen experience that we promised you. Or alternatively, they could come out and it could be a wet fire and a lift. Like, yeah, it, it, could could be. Be either, it can be either one of those. Mm. I'm, I'm still on that kind of bench of being like, you know what? If it, if it is a wet fart and a lift, it's a wet fart and a lift. Like I'm, mm. I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay because I, you know, I have other games to go and play. You know, I yeah. have, you know, I have UFC that I enjoy. I have FIFA that I enjoy. I have Fortnite that I enjoy. I can go and do other things. Yeah. Obviously, to people, eFootball or PES or however you're defining it, is incredibly precious to people. Yeah, because they've grown up with that game, and it is a. It, <laughs> It's very hard for some people to let go of mm. it because it's like it's that thing you grew up with. It's like having like your family pet, and it's like it's like no, it's please, like I don't want to get yeah. That's what it's like yeah, it's like you're like yeah, it's... I don't want it to end. It's like Breaking Bad or something. I don't know if you all watch that, but it's like that where you're like, I wish they did another season or another two seasons. It's like mm. no, like this is a brand. Like Konami have 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 gone to. I think the only the only like real concrete. Um, thing they've done is come out and actually like kind of not bury the pez brand but they've really left it under no illusion that this is a brand new football experience you know what i mean like it's pretty much in every line and every interview that they've done they've mentioned that this is a brand new thing you know they've even said that this is e-football it's from the makers of pez you know what i mean it's obviously yeah. i know as we talked about this before where the like the legacy stuff is still there the breadcrumbs the foundation that it's been built on is still there but this to me is kind of like owning a restaurant and tearing it down and then building, you know, something else on it. Like it's not building another restaurant. It's something completely different. Yeah. It's something new it's it's it. it. Yeah. It's, it's built on, on the right foundations. And like Spoonie, just to bring you back in there, like 
that that to me is a lot of the positive stuff but like like where like what do you want to see at gamescom i mean we asked the boys this last week i think ricky was that asked uh me and Vern as well last week like like what it is we wanted to see at gamescom like i'll start with you spoonie like you know we're probably two months away from launch right like Mm -hmm. what do you want to see we know Master League's not coming at launch, right? We know Edit Mode's not coming at launch and all that sort of stuff. But from a core gameplay experience, like what do you want to see at Gamescom for eFootball announced? Um, similar to what we've seen in the past, just pure gameplay. Mm. Um, I think you were at one of the Gamescoms once. Um, I think I remember seeing you and yeah, you were about sat, two years ago. Then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so just pure gameplay. I mean, we'll never, we'll never know what it actually feels like until the controller is in our hand and yeah. only then can we judge it that's the only way i've ever judged a game i can't say i can how can i look at someone else play a game and go cool that looks that looks amazing it's gonna be mm. oh, it's, let me just score that 90 percent. and but if i get the controller in my hand and i play it and go bloody hell this is this isn't quite how i imagined it and only when i get that controller in my hand can i say does this game suck or is it really really good mm. um so it's you know, I, I just want to see gameplay, see if I can pick out some, some things like, you know, whether it's tactically or how the players position themselves on the field. You know, with, um, I think if you look at 21, PES 21, PES 20, the uh, defensive line is always very deep. You can't mm. really get them really high up unless you're using the D-pad, gig and press and God knows what else. And um, attacking style, that's about the only way you can get the defense really high up the pitch. So, yeah, just... I think I just want to see gameplay and see how much it's changed to the new football game open beta in terms of the pace of the game. Has it changed? Um, because that game was very, very slow. And whilst that's fine, I, I, I really like the pace of the, the new football game open beta. Yeah. But I think if you're playing online and someone's just passing the ball at the around at the back, it's going to be very, very hard to get the ball back because you could literally just, the players were moving so slow yeah, that you couldn't close it's, the ball down. Yeah. So you, you're going to get these people just pass around at the back, one nil up, and then that's it. They just roll. Ro- you know. I mean, that's a problem as it is at the moment with the fast gameplay. So can you imagine yeah. what it'd be like, you know, online? Exactly. If you're playing against a guy that wants to do that, you know, and yeah. no secondary press. Yeah, um, exactly. With no secondary press. Yeah. You know, yeah. and Med, like uh, to ask you as well, like what is what what do you want to see announced, or what do you want to see more of next month at Gamescom? that will make you kind of, you know, a li- maybe a little bit more positive about eFootball coming out? Ah, that's a good question. <clears throat> I would like to know more about my club, of course, but because mm-hmm. I think the community will go more and more into the my club mode, like the same thing happened in FIFA with foot. Mm. So... Um, I would like to have some more information about that. And I would really love to know how the graphics will be at the end. A little mm-hmm. teaser, gameplay uh, trailer, something like that. You know, that would be amazing. So just mm-hmm. um, uh, delete our concerns about that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see what it looks like on next gen? Uh, well, on PS5 running at its best, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's fair enough. I think we all kind of want to see that now, because we all we all just have these, you know, like images in our, our in our head of some of the screenshots that were going up, you know, on from the trailers and stuff, where it was like, you know, I think it was like Thomas Muller. There was one where he looked, you know, very <laughs> funny, and you know, like there does there does need Danilo. Yeah, Danilo, yeah, there does need to be a big a big increase in the the graphics. I think for PS Five and. As we said last week in the podcast, I think, I think the one thing that's kind of given me a small bit more confidence as like compared to last week when we were talking on the podcast, I genuinely feel that this has been the plan all along. Um, I don't think the messaging has come out to, you know, give confidence in that. But I know a lot of people were saying, no, they definitely were planning, you know, A, B and C. And now they're on to, you know y and z where it's like they had to change stuff i think it was a plan all along i think they saw the success of my club they saw the success of mobile and then they obviously were probably like you know knowing that they had to change the unreal engine you know they couldn't really cancel again this year and not bring out something on the unreal engine so 
I do think we'll see the modes and the content over the next six months will be telling the story as to whether or not this was like the idea all along. But I think it, I think it was. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, we've been talking for over an hour and a bit, lads. So I'm going to, I'm going to end it there because I just want to end it with asking you something that's a little bit more lighthearted, but it's, I'm going to start with you, Med, and let you go then and continue your live stream. And, but I want to, I want you to give me two legends that you would like to see added to eFootball for my club. Legends in eFootball? Yeah, man. First one, Samuel Eto. Ooh. Ooh. Spicy yeah. choice. That, that, that hit me in the heart, that did. That <laughs> hit me in the heart. He's definitely my number one. Number, oh, number nice. one. Because uh, I played a lot with him on PES 6. And oh, I... Yeah. Turned him into the goalkeeper and made a lot of goals with him running to the front, you know? That was... Uh, I have really <laughs> nice uh, memories to him, so he's just my number one. Just and just run. <laughs> <laughs> um, the second one, maybe a defender. We have two less defenders and maybe someone like Yap Sam would be nice. Mm, nice choices. A very, a very aggressive Dutchman. Yeah, that, yeah. that works. That works. Would be, what about yourself, man? Would be awesome. Yeah, man, in they're good choices. In terms of legends? Um, yeah, man. Van Basten. Is he uh, <laughs> going to be one of the other players? And Zizou today. You're getting into dream territory now, though, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Zizou would bring the house down, I think, if he was announced. Yeah, yeah. He would be it's... the ultimate. Like, I, th well, I think he's signed with FIFA, ultimate. isn't he? He's yeah, he's in, is he, he's in FIFA, was, isn't he? Who? Yeah. Uh, Marco? Uh, yes, Zidane. Is Zidane yes. and Van Basten, yeah. Zidane, Van yeah. Basten. Van Basten. And Eto'o as well. Yeah, yeah so he's in there as well. All right, Waze, okay, don't, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Waze, come on, give me your two, man. Uh, mine are two, uh, mine are just two Villa ones, just because I, I like I say, I'm in that kind of mood at the moment. <laughs> um, so one is probably the best left foot I've seen on a human being, uh, which was Thomas Hitzelsberger. Jesus, where are Absolute you okay. cannon. If you've not... <laughs> just check out his goal against Birmingham City, Barry, and you'll understand I know who it is. I know who yeah, it is. Know yeah, he literally scored a thunderbolt, and it went, oh, it was just glorious. Um, your bow might, might have something to say about that. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, Hitzelsberger was consistent. He did it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> your bow, your bow had two. Um, and uh, the other one for me is... Uh, my favourite Villa striker growing up, which was, uh, he actually went to the MLS um, and absolutely destroyed the MLS. Um, I, of course, am talking about Juan Pablo Ankel. Get him in there with his long hair and his hairband and his little thing that went round his wrist. I didn't yeah. get it. Sorry, who? Uh, Juan Pablo Ankel. Ah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, I know yeah. him. Colombian yeah, yeah. absolute superstar for one season at Villa. He was really good. <laughs> but that one season, it rubbed off like on me. He looked like prime Ronaldo for one season. and then. Well, well when, we tra when we traded out and we got Milan Barros, it was like we just kind of traded. Yeah. Like, he was like, he's literally like the exact same type of player. Yeah. It's like a yeah. Master League swap. That's yeah. what it's like. Master and, then we, and then somehow we traded Milan Barros for John Carew. I don't know how that works, but we did. Yeah, that was a bit of a, a different one, all right. Nice choices. I, mean, I have to go with Roy Keane. That's my ultimate. I don't need two choices. I just want Roy. Just get him in, <laughs> get him in the midfield, and you know, and knock some heads off people. Especially on my club. I'd love him on my club. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I reckon that the Roy Keane, I think, will probably be somebody that I'd like to see, you know, in my club five star. I think he'd do damage. Imagine him and Vieira midfield now. That's what I'd love to see. Why? No. Oh, wow. Oh man, that'd just be unreal. And Kaka then attacking. But um. Yeah, boys, we'll end it there. Look, as I said, appreciate you coming on. I think we had a good old chat, just about an hour yeah, and 20 good. minutes, I think it was. So um, hopefully we can do it again sometime when, yeah, I mean, when the when the news is out and Gamescom is come and gone, we can kind of react to that and get you back on if you're interested. Yeah, but... definitely. Thank you I really very much. I enjoyed that. Yeah, man. And I do appreciate you coming on. And um, I think we touched on pretty much everything. It was a bit of a different discussion than we had last week and the week before. So it's been good. Um, yeah. But yeah, we'll end it there, boys. And I do appreciate you coming on and everyone in Med's chat as well that was listening. Hope you enjoyed it some bit. Um, you know, we do this in one take, so usually you get to see everything 
warts and all we don't really edit much out of it um but we try to keep the swearing to a minimum this time because we did pretty well i think there was only one just so... one then, yeah there was and one. i think even then it was covered by sound so i think you're all good yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah I muffled it up a little bit i think we'll just put that as a warning sign in future folks if you don't see me on the podcast that means it is going to be a sweary one <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, to... you're like my uh you're like my editor I'm, like, I'm what's you know, called I'm, I'm what's called as the fun police <laughs> <laughs> yeah but look it was a good chat lads and as i said we'll get you on again hopefully yep. uh soon wes as always um i'll let you take us out uh you can do the outro i like to let you do that you know yeah, of course you do. you're, course you're do. the main man for that but uh, you need yeah, me all the work <laughs> yeah i'm out anyway from that i appreciate you all uh tagging along and if you're listening to this appreciate you sticking with us for the last couple of weeks i mean the support for the podcast over the last few weeks has been insane. Um, I think we like that. The first one we did with Sep, I think, at over ten thousand listens or more across all platforms, which is more than what we probably had all last year combined. With his, yeah, so it's been absolutely crazy. And last week's episode and stuff was brilliant as well. So, you know, in fairness, we are using Spoonie and Midnasset to get the views. You know, that's what yeah. we're doing here. Yeah. You know, we have to get the big names on. So. Yeah, that's it for me. I'll let Wes, I'll let you take it out, Wes, as you always do so so eloquently. Um, and yeah, peace. Yeah, take care, yeah. everyone. See you in a bit. Thanks, everyone. Thank Cheers. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.